In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus, Mary, St. Joseph, St. Teresa, pray for us. St. John Chrysostom, pray for us. The Holy Face. I've been seeing some beautiful, wonderful things in the Holy Face today. I usually see a lot at Holy Communion. I put a lot of a lot of value on that. But today, it was kind of more at home. And it's kind of interesting. It's like, well, okay, Jesus, if you want to help me here, so be it. But I saw so many beautiful colors in the Holy Face. It just came so alive. I was like, oh, wow. There's so many mysteries hitting me all at once in the Holy Face. Just more than I could ever fathom in it. And I wrote some of it down. The seven gifts of the Holy Ghost are in the Holy Face. Of course, we see the main the main uh, images, the cross, the Bible open, the refuge with the cross on it. We see the dome of St. Peter's Basilica with the passion of the church. And all the wisdom of the Holy Face for all time. The book of life is in the Holy Cross. Your name, if you're in the book of life, is in the Holy Face. It's so beautiful. Even a picture of ourselves, everyone in the world, all their faces is in the Holy Face. If you zoom in, all these little pixels, everybody's in the Holy Face. The world, the roads, all these little roads and and hills and valleys and things are in the holy face even hell the four last things is in the holy face the precepts of the church the marriage laws are in the holy face all of the entire catechism and the wealth of knowledge of the catechism is in the holy face and i even saw the holy face grain life and they say it's three-dimensional you can read about it online how it kind of it's three-dimensional i saw it and it was turning it was like a, a cube and it was turning and it was the four living creatures in the holy face his face was moving around with the four living creatures and i thought that was so wonderful and i forgot my notes so i'm just going for memory but the it's all the colors start coming alive in the holy face it's like sparklers like like fireworks and things and it started to turn and I could see the four living creatures in this in this holy face and everything. So wonderful. Also, the promises. You must read the promises if you want to be completely satisfied with the holy face. And review them frequently because of the love. The love is just so beautiful and wonderful. No one can offer you what the holy face can offer you. It offers everything. So... Amen. Wonderful. All the sacraments of the church are in the holy face. I mean, it goes on and on. And like I've said before, this catechism of the Catholic Church is so, so important in these end times. I've been reading it. And remember, Pope John Paul II and Cardinal Ratzinger, which is his imprimatur on here, he was the head of... Of the organ of the commission that Pope John Paul II had to, for the writing of this book is quite big, and but don't be overwhelmed by it because it's quite nourishing, and it's wonderful. It talks about the dignity of the person. It talks about the wholeness of the church and how it should be open and welcoming to everybody, and it talks about the mystery of the body of Christ. And the dignity of the person and just how it's written is how the church really should be. And it really respects the reader so much when you're reading it. It elevates us. I'm learning a lot. It talks about the litany of the hours and how it's reflective of the, of the Mass and Eucharist. I never put those two things together like that. But that's what you have when you put geniuses like Pope John Paul II and Pope Benedict XVI together you have a beautiful, beautiful relationship between God and the Father and the Holy Trinity just shown through these men and their beautiful relationship, the Holy Face completely shown through. And this is all ordained by the Lord. He actually said in Holy Love Ministries messages that Pope Benedict XVI was going to complete the mission that Pope John Paul II had started. And I highly recommend the holylove.org confraternity. Uh, if you can't uh, have them to do that, it's a little overwhelming for you at first. And uh, then you can read the messages for a while. You can uh, grab one of their books. I noticed they just compiled a new book that has double what this one has. And I think that's awesome. This is a 
blessed Mary, refuge of souls, protectress of the faith. And this is the triple blessing that's the, the united heart. So we have the, the Immaculate Heart of Mary embraced by the Sacred Heart of Jesus embraced by the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Trinity. A very miraculous image and one that I personally have printed off and displayed in every room in my home except my bathroom. So there you go and the kitchen actually but uh, I have them in a couple rooms and they're very much consol consolation for anyone because what they do is they help you accept God's will and what more could a person want than be able to accept God's will in peace and be able to do the will of God which is one of the hardest things because as you know we all want to do our own will this is kind of a silly but I got these post-it things I didn't really think much of them I was kind of on the fence about getting them just because they're of the price of like three dollar fifty cents for, for little tiny things of paper and you think well hmm. but they've come in so handy in the last 24 hours I've bookmarked I don't know if you can really see because of the way it's I've been able to bookmark and it comes on and off so that you can take it off easily whereas tape or, or a uh, yeah, I, I've been using paper clips and they just kind of move all over. They fall off or they just don't really work. They put a little bend in the page and they're just hard to see. But this is the Lorena prayers. And I bookmarked, I don't know if you can tell with these little post-it things. I bookmarked exactly where all the prayers are. Because there's explanations in prayers. And sometimes I just want to go to the prayers that I can easily flip and go straight to a prayer here. And it's just become so much more easier than the whole paper clip thing. Because you can really just see it and, and get to it. And there's these different colors. They're not too annoying to the eye. They're kind of translucent. So they're not totally eye popping and, and things. So I highly recommend that. They aren't too big too. Like some of them are, are pretty long. So I thought I should get longer ones. But these are like the perfect size. So anyway... Let me go get my notes and see if there's anything I forgot to mention right now, at least. So all of history, from all the beginning to the end of time, is in the holy face. All of history. The history of creation, all the seven days, and everything is all in the Holy Face. The Old and New Testament is in the Holy Face. St. Michael's sword and shield is in the Holy Face. All the angels and saints are in the Holy Face in the Book of Life, like I said. Uh, I'm just reading what, which ones I missed here. Now let's go back up. I saw the butterfly. I see, see the butterfly again in the Holy Face. The butterfly symbolizes eternity, and I think of it as a Paschal Lamb. I think of it as Easter Sunday too, and, and baptism. And, and don't don't uh, don't throw away those those luminous mysteries. I know they've gotten a lot of bad rap, but they are actually quite w wonderful if you really delve into the study of them and what they really mean and what Pope John Paul was about. Because you don't read about his quotes about the Rosary and what he believes and loves about the rosary and and he's so much loved the rosary he wrote a lot about it and this stuff has been kind of squashed by a lot of traditionalists who think that they don't want to say it but they're missing out they're missing out a lot in all the treasures of that of that luminous mystery don't throw it away on thursday uh i've started praying it every day actually and the more i pray it the more i'm interested in learning more about about its mysteries and delving into what Pope John Paul really intended when he when he designed it but not only that what he really loves about the rosary because he was a complete advocate of the rosary he loved the rosary so much he loved Blessed Mother he entrusted everything to her and he was a very forgiving person and then that's one of the fruits I think of saying the Holy Rosary is the grace of forgiveness so amen right we all want to be able to forgive I mean some people, I guess, don't, which is crazy, but essentially, you want to forgive because it's just a, like they say it's like a weight coming off, and that's kind of how it feels. He, Our Lord has said to me many times, many will betray me in these end times. Many will betray me. So, 
Keep your lamps burning with all the things I told you. Confession, daily mass if you can, rosary, sacramentals, uh, sacraments. And make it a day. Everything's a day. The host goes up and down the consecration. The sun rises. The sun sets. It's all a day. It's all a rhythm. Get into the rhythm now. Do it. And you'll be glad you did. And constant prayer if you can. As much as you can. Work and pray. Isn't that, isn't that one of what the monks talk about? I always talks about this. There's mysterious colors and mysteries coming out of the holy face. The paths of rose. The webs of rosaries of prayer and grace is all coming from the holy face I also saw this thing it was the green scapular I instantly thought of the green scapular uh, messages of Anna Marie they're being kind of plagued from within but they're still very very valuable for today and I highly recommend you reading her her prophecies don't talk to the people but read the prophecies and really look at them because they're going to be coming uh, coming true. May God truly bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.